Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can array an object uh, on a curve. As you can see here, I can update this curve easily. And I can change the number of count. Uh, the coordination of the orientation, which is on the bottom surface, we're going to talk about this as we talk about the tutorial. As you can see here, we can change the location easily in the U and V direction. And if I put this to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, this is going to be at the center of the bottom. And there is going to be also a factor, simply a scaling. So that is going to help us to actually design uh, any object and array an object on a curve easily. So for example, if I draw an arc and put this to the curve, you can see that I can simply change the count. And if they are intersecting maybe decrease the scaling factor and even increase the count so we can have more of that uh, on the curve. The reason I'm uh, going to explain this tutorial is that if I go to transform array and use this curve array and as you can see here the geometry I want so for example if I right click here and select this geometry uh, for the curve select this curve and uh, define the same count here as you can see here this is not going to give us the good results and when i change the geometry it's not going to sit on my curve and based on the location it's going to update so that's the reason we want to learn how to do this in grasshopper uh, and orient anything on the curve okay let's get started from scratch uh, what i want to do here is to first go to the params menu and bring up a curve uh, inside the canvas right click and set one curve select the curve we also want a geometry you can use any geometry you want it can be a b rep um, or a mesh even so i'm going to use a geometry container and i'm going to right click and set one geometry and bring the geometry inside grasshopper okay to orient it what we have to do here is to first go to the curve and in the division you can see that we have a horizontal frame component so i'm going to connect that to the curve we want and let's go to display full names so you can see the inputs the next input is the count so i can just give this a number slider maybe from 2 to 40 and just delete the title and that's going to control the number of count i want on the curve okay the next part is the geometry and orientation on the planes we have here in transform we have an orient so i want to orient this geometry Obviously the target plane, there is a source plane and a target plane. The target plane is going to be these frames, but we don't have any source. So as you can see here by default, it's uh, on the XY plane. If I go on the params menu and select a point, and if I right click and set one point and give it to this corner, for example, as you can see here, it's going to sit on this corner. And if I change the location of this point, this is going to update. So what we want to do is to make this parametric and also learn some tools here. Uh, I can do that by working on the geometry. And this technique is really easy because you just have to go to the surface and give a bounding box to the geometry you want to orient. And now we want to pick up the bottom part. Uh, actually, if I uh, go to surface deconstruct B rep and deconstruct that, you can see that we have faces, and with a set list item, I can select the face. As you can see, this is zero, this is one, and so on. So I want, uh, I don't want to get caught on selecting the face. I just want to select the bottom part. That's going to be easy. What you can do here is to go to the surface and select the area and find the centroid. So as you can see here, this is going to be the centroid, all of uh, all of the faces. And in this example, because we want the bottom part, obviously this point uh, has the lowest Z coordinate. So I can go to the vector and deconstruct, get the Z here. As you can see here, there are different Zs. I'm going to go to the set and use the source component. You can also search for sort. This is a useful tool. It's going to sort the Z component from minimum to maximum, which is uh, actually what we want. 
Uh, you can also use other tools like vector point, uh, for example, sort points. As you can see here, it sorts based on x, y, and then z, which is not really good for uh, uh, for this example. Also, we have sort along curve. It's going to sort points along the curve. We have to define curves, so it's going to make it complicated. That's why I think this deconstruct sort is a really useful tool to actually find that. Okay, now that we have sorted the Z components, we can sort other values here. It's really easy and you can also add different things you want to sort. And this is going to be the sorting of the faces. So I'm going to give the faces here to the face input. That's why I have the minimum, uh, the face with the minimum Z component here on the first of the list. So I can now select that with a set list item. By default it's zero, so it's going to pick up the first face. And as you can see here, this is going to select the face at the bottom. Okay, now that we have that, we can uh, select a point on this, so we can use that for the source plane. Uh, here we can use the surface evaluate surface component, and that's going to evaluate the surface at the bottom. Right click, reparameterize, and I'm going to use an MD slider. Uh, MD slider, when we reparameterize this, is going to be make it from a 0 to 1 and 0 to 1 in this direction. So it's actually easy to select it. And as you can see here, we can change it on different locations. And now we can orient that. Okay, let's go and say, okay, we have the frame here. So I'm going to put this to the source. And as you can see here, it's putting it on the plane. And by changing this location, I can change the location at the bottom of my object. And if I want to make this more professional, I can use a uh, point vector point x, y, z. Uh, x coordinate is actually a u and y coordinate is a v. Because when we parameterize, it's going to be uv coordinate and we don't have any z coordinates. So it's going to be nothing. So if we give a number from 0 to 1, let's delete the title, so we can see that uv, and I'm going to give that to the u and v. Let's rename this to u and v. And here you can see that it's going to move from 0 to 1 for the u. If we put this to 0 0.5, and 0 0.5, it's obviously going to be the center of the object. Okay, for the frame, which is the plane uh, we used for the source plane, we can use the vector uh, plane. And there's a tool called flip plane, which is really great. And I can, I can just give that to the plane and work with that. Okay, there is a reverse X, Y, and a swap uh, for the axis. So if I want to change that, I have to give it a toggle, T-O-G, Boolean toggle, or you can find it from params menu, input, Boolean toggle, let's say x, okay, there is a y, and I can say there is a z. For this one, I'm going to put this to false. Uh, the z is important because it's the direction we have on this object, so we can flip that in the different direction. Okay, assume that we have an object, a curve like this, uh, I'm going to extrude it up, so to go here, extrude close parallel curves, and bring it a little bit upwards. Okay, let's select this one for the geometry. And I'm going to make this arc a little bit bigger so we can see the results. Okay. Uh, so here for the Z flipping, it's obviously that's going to bring it up and down. X flip, uh, as you can see here, it's going to change the directions uh, for the arrow. So now you can see that this flip plane is going to help you to actually design any direction you want. By just flipping these X, Y, and Z directions, you can uh, put this in any direction you want. And that's going to be great. So we can actually move that in any direction, bring it up. Okay, we have to put this to true, true, true to put this in this direction. And uh, that's it. That's going to be helpful uh, for any object you want. And again, you can see that we have control over the bottom plane by defining this UV. 
Okay, let's put this to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And an extra thing we can do here is to scale the object. So I'm going to say transform scale. I'm going to scale this. The center of scaling is really important because we want to scale it at the bottom. So I'm going to give that to the point, uh, which is going to scale it at the same point we have here. And now with the factor, we can say from 10% to maybe 300%, uh, which means three times bigger. And let's name this scale. Okay. And now if I just turn off everything, and only turn on the orientation we can scale and maybe if we make it smaller we can have more of that okay so that's really easy to use it and uh, that's it that's how you can create a better tool instead of curve array and put it on the curve uh, on the bottom and uh, I hope that this was helpful if you have any question ask below this lesson and see you next time and now we can just give this geometry an output, whatever geometry it is, like this, and have it as a tool. If you want to make it a cluster, you can also simply bring all of these inputs you want. Let's just extract this, uh, these two, bring it a little bit back, and these flipping things. also the scaling and then bring this geometry out okay and I can select all of them uh, middle click and select the cluster or right click and select the cluster and now you can see that this is going to give us a cluster with all of these inputs we want we can double click on the cluster and move the inputs based on uh, which one you want at the first so we want the geometry then we want the curve we want the count we want the scaling maybe after that the UV which is the location of the bottom we want to control and some reversing and because the output is only one obviously that's okay just save that Okay, now you have the cluster, so remember that you can select the geometry curve, number of count you want, and I'm going to internalize this and save this file so you can download it from parametrichouse.com. And remember that uh, if you want to open this cluster, you can right click and explode the cluster. So it's going to make it like this. So remember, you can always explode the cluster and you can also have the example file to use it in your project. So remember that you can download it from parametrichouse.com. And I hope this tutorial was useful. If you have any question, ask below and see you next time. Bye.